All right, guys, so in this video, I am going to be discussing something that I saw on like an, an ask.com website or something. The question was, did the passengers inside any of the four aircrafts feel any pain or potentially know what was really going on, specifically with the Pentagon and both of the Twin Towers? Because obviously when it comes to the Shanksville crash, the one that was potentially headed for the U.S. Capitol, they knew and I would imagine, it's hard to really say, but the visual inside the cockpit would be some type of field, just the way that they crashed, you know, them breaking into the cockpit. If you looked outside of those windows, you would see a field that gets closer and closer and closer, and then it just dives right into the ground. Now, when it comes to the thought of any of the passengers experiencing any pain, it is basically impossible considering how fast all those four crashes happen to feel any pain, or especially when it comes to both of the planes hitting the Twin Towers. I'm sure those passengers were so, uh, you know, just not understanding what was really happening that it, it didn't really matter. The other thing to think about, and not many people talk about this, it's just kind of a weird thing that I saw. I saw another one of those videos where it shows like the cockpit POV of both of the planes hitting the towers. And when the second plane comes into New York City, they could literally see the smoke coming from the North Tower, meaning that those hijackers inside of the plane that was hitting the South Tower knew that the first, you know, hijack was for them a success because it hit the North Tower. And those hijackers didn't, they did not think, I'm not even sure any of them really knew what was going to be happening. I'm sure they didn't think the buildings were going to collapse or maybe they did. I don't know, but we do know that Osama bin Laden did not think they were going to collapse. A lot of people, uh, you know, surrounding New York City, firefighters didn't think those buildings were going to collapse. But when it comes to any of the passengers or the, the hijackers experiencing any pain, it, it's just, it, it's not going to happen. It happens, it simply happened within milliseconds. So you're not, your body is not going to be able to register that. The other thing people were talking about, and this was more of just my thought, if you're located at the way back of the plane, like the last seat, would you be able to, would your mind understand that you were crashing before you actually died? And I was researching it. It seems like, no, there's just no way. It just happened way too fast. And the second that the tip of the plane really like hits the building, they're basically all dead based on the force at which the plane was traveling, whether the North or the South Tower or even the Pentagon, but specifically smacking into one of those towers at 450 or 510 miles per hour, you're not going to really feel anything. So no one felt anything when it comes to that. I think they were very disoriented. I don't think any of the passengers on either of the planes knew that they were that they had crashed into the Twin Towers or that that's where it was going because, you know, based on your vantage point, it's not like they're in the cockpit. Now, it is interesting. This is always something that I've, I've thought of, like the idea if you are one of those hijackers and you're you're aiming the plane directly at the building, at a certain point, there's a point of no return. Like, okay, at this point, I cannot turn the plane. The plane is going to crash no matter what. And really, like, imagine being in a cockpit and you just see the building get closer and closer and closer and closer. And they're like the only ones that had that view, like right up against that building. Now it happened so fast, so maybe they weren't even able to process it. But at a certain point, there's like a point of no return. And you're like, holy, you know, you're actually flying the plane into a building, you know, even though that's what they were meant to do. And that, you know, they thought they were going to go to paradise for it and everything like that. It's still as a human reaction, there has to be like, once you reach a point of no return to where you cannot turn this plane, the plane is going into the building. There has to be just just a, a crazy emotion, I think, but th that's just another some, something else that I thought about, just being in a cockpit of a plane that's crashing. I mean, obviously the hijacker is horrible, horrible people, but still just the, the human raw emotion of you're flying the plane, you can see it. Really, this is more so with the North Tower because you, we see the footage of the North Tower. It like hits it smack dab in the middle. It's like pointed right at it going into it. The South Tower was different. It was more disheveled. It came in at a crazy angle uh, and, and kind of lowered it and had to descend rapidly and kind of hit the side. But even the South Tower as well, it's just crazy to think about. And then when it comes to the Pentagon, I mean, we've just got such little info of the Pentagon just because it really didn't do much. It was almost a complete afterthought. And I kind of feel like that's what the attacks were maybe going to feel like if both of the towers were still standing. I mean, obviously it would be horrible. There would be a ton of people that died. But I've said this a lot. It's the extra component 
of obviously the first plane hitting it, all the news networks go to it. The second plane hits it with all the news network networks there, so everybody sees it. And then there's this time frame, and they kind of you turn to a rescue operation. How many people can we save? And just the devastation of all of that concrete, all of that raw material from the South Tower falling, the sound of it, and you, it's just demoralized. It's just crazy. And then on top of that, 29 minutes later, the North Tower falls. So I think the towers falling, it's just such an extra component. It made 9-11 as bad of, of an event as it was. Don't get me wrong, it still would be terrible. But I think with those towers falling, if they would have stayed up, it would have been a, a lot different of an event. It's those towers falling and capt everybody capturing it on video when really no one thought they potentially could fall. So that's just another aspect of it. But in general, I don't think the passengers really knew anything. Another thing to think about, like people that were trapped inside the elevators, I did do a video on that. A lot of those people probably, it's crazy to think about, they died inside the Twin Towers. They, they don't even know what 9-11 is. You know, people on the upper floors, they don't even know what happened. I wonder if some of the people on the upper floors thought it was like an explosion or something. Like a lot of them probably didn't even know it was a plane because, you know, you're on the, like the 105th, 106th floor of the North Tower, immediate, there's a bunch of smoke. They probably thought there was an explosion inside of the building. That's what I would guess. Because a lot of people from the outside that didn't see the plane hit it thought it was some type of, of like, you know, explosion that was coming from inside like one of the upper floors because that's where all the fire was but that's just another weird chilling thing to think about the people that actually died in the event don't even know 9-11 existed because it was happening while they were in it it's just crazy to think about so the overall point I would say is there's no way that anyone felt any pain it happened way way too quickly pretty much any airplane crash like that where it's you're going extremely fast and then the plane immediately Basically, the best way I can describe it is it disintegrates. Now, technically, it didn't disintegrate. It entered the building, and there were parts that flew out. So uh, there there could have been parts that survived inside of the building as well. Obviously, we will never know that. There are zero photos of what I would like to call like the debris pile because there have been drawings of what the interior holes would look like. And the interior holes were basically those big black holes that were created from the plane's entry. And like if you look in, it's just darkness. It's just total black. You can't really see it. The only way you'd be able to see in is if you got like on a helicopter and looked down at like a, a steep angle. You could possibly see the debris pile and possibly what's left of the planes. Because there was, at least you would expect, something left of both of the airplanes that entered the towers. But obviously they were completely disfigured. And everyone on board, unfortunately, passed away immediately. The Pentagon was different, that crash, because they were so much lower to the ground. And the Pentagon is kind of weird that they were able to hit, be that low and, and actually kind of just perfectly crash the plane into the side of a very shell, you know, small building in terms of height. It was, it was a horizontal building, not a vertical building. And you can see the security cam of it. It's like the plane is like its feet off of the ground. And it, it got so close to the ground before it crashed in. There's like a highway and it knocked over some of the light posts on the highway. The wings did. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.